to bring it back to ayahuasca. Like even Roy did that, ayahuasca at the place I did, I did half, ayahuasca. I did half he did a half. It's a two day half ceremony. Of, Roy did one. I fucking dipped. That shit was scary. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone, bro. It, 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 it wasn't laugh. scary. It was just a lot to take in. Well, you said it was like a bunch of. It was like too many people t- talking at a barbecue at a family barbecue. Yeah. Or some kind of family function. Yeah. It was like being in a room because there were a lot of people there at the yeah. ceremony or whatever. But then in your head, it's just too many fucking people talking. Was it people that you hadn't, that you like forgot you knew kind of thing? Yeah. I think like it aunties was just, and uncles? yeah, but it was just more visualizations of them just multiple visualizations of people and things and people you love and people you miss and stuff like that and then having the realization in the moment that oh i just i want love i want my son to know love i have to in order for my son to know love he has to see love so if I'm going to if I'm going to show him love I I need to fucking be in love I need to fuck oh shit I have to fucking be with somebody I got to be in love okay well what were my examples of love and now we're right back to the day he was born well what was my father's example how did my father show me love and then I think back and I think back to all of the moments that he had with the other woman and not my mom and I'm like oh fuck he was in love for as much as, as, as much like as he I wouldn't can. have stayed with her if he wasn't in love. Like what you know about him. Divorcing my mom, whatever, you know, that could be its own. That's a separate thing. But my father loved that woman who he's buried next to. And when I go back and like, when I like, if we're just talking, just thinking about, okay, my job as a father is to prepare my son for the world, period, full stop. That is my only purpose on earth right now, is to prepare him for life without me. Love is one of those things he will have to figure out how to navigate, so I need to show him love. All right, what examples of love have I seen so far? Okay, my aunt, my, I got an aunt and an uncle. They always sneak in fucking family functions. Check, all right? But that will save that. My dad, oh, shit. He checked the homework. He went to the practices. We had the food. Oh, shit, that's love. It wasn't nothing personal. Right. It was just who we loved. Yeah. And it was complicated. Of course it's complicated when you're on your 11th fucking child. <laughs> yes, there are, there are hurdles to having wrinkle-free yes. happiness. He had challenges. But, yes. <laughs> so... That realization, but then you have to first love yourself. And so then that's where the journey of, okay, well, what do I want? What makes me happy? What do I want to do? Because you can't meet nobody while you fucking, like how's somebody gonna make you happy? You ain't happy with you. Right. So you gotta start with you first. So you gotta rebuild. So you start with that shit. So it's a little bit of that. And then the other revelation I had was everything I've ever wanted to do, like I've felt indebted to my mom for all of the sacrifices that she's made. And it's nothing she's ever asked. She's never held shit over my head. But I look and I go, oh, I just want my mom to not have to work so hard. I love my mom. Hmm. Everything I've ever done was just so I wouldn't be a burden on her. That's why I was busting my ass so that she wouldn't have to worry about me. It's a fucking great feeling for your mom. And I don't know if she would admit this, but I remember when I paid off my student loans. Finally, I don't know. When I made my last student loan payment, there was a weird relief from her. Right. You know, she like, acknowledged it. Yeah, she was like, "Oh well, I'm I'm glad you finally got like 
Like I could tell she was smiling yeah. even. You know, moms worry. So to always be able to put her in a position where she doesn't have to worry about me, like that's a gift. And like, it's like, oh, everything was just about letting my mom know I'm okay. Is that why I work so hard? Oh, uh. And then yeah. I woke up the next morning like, fuck this shit. I'm <laughs> going back to New York. Like, you have those two revelations within a six yeah. hour span? Yeah. I'm straight on night two, bro. Yeah. I don't need to ever do it again. Like, I don't know how, like, the people who do the ayahuasca, oh, every weekend, I've yeah, done yeah, it yeah. 20 times. Yeah. I, you might be in a different space. Yeah. For me, I'm good, bro. I got what I needed. I will return to drinking old fashions with extra orange. Well, but I would Man, also great recommend you for being willing because you're not mentally unwell. Like you're like pretty from the outside in, even in th like, I think I know you pretty well. I think you're like pretty even you're like doing, you're all right. Yeah. You know? So the fact that you will go to therapy the fact that you will drink ayahuasca, the fact that you will like tune into yourself is, is admirable. Even realizing like squeezing your baby. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like even like, e even a t being a I can tell you never held a baby. How like, do you do it? Like this? You, yeah. you bring them up here it's vertical. It's like a log. You heard that baby um, vertical. Well, I'm not going to do this <laughs> to illustrate a goddamn point. I've held 10 babies. Um, have you gotten better at like remaining calm when the stakes, when the when you're up against the wall? Because I'm i not good at remaining calm. I'm never I'm, good I'm, at I'm, it. I'm never good at it. Uh, you know, the, the mantra in those moments is this too shall pass. You know, what I'm going over with my um, MDMA therapist is, is um, you can't think your way out of it. You got to feel your way out of it. You just said something. It's, a, it's wild, which is your MDMA therapist. Yeah. Tell me about what is that? It's therapy where you do some sessions where you do MDMA. How often? I've talked to him a million times that I've only done the um, MDMA. I did just MDMA once and I did MDMA with psilocybin uh, the second time. Um, and it's incredible. Do you sit? And he's do you speak to him the whole master. time? Um, no. So I, I do talk sessions with him all the time, but why uh, MDMA sessions? He comes over to your house, you lie on your couch with a blanket, put on a sleep mask, he puts on headphones, he plays music, you take it, he talks to you beforehand, he's like, you wanna set any yeah. tensions or whatever. And then and then you take it and you, um, he just kind of babysits you and you, you can check in with him if you want to, but you kind of just sit there with your thoughts and you cry if you wanna cry mm -hmm. and you, you go through. I mean, the last one, I was bawling crying scream i was like so there's times where i was like screaming like ah like just letting it all it was incredibly cathartic incredible catharsis that and the 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 toad venom were like the two most cathartic the toad venom i like talked to my dad after he died like i told him it was okay to pass and and i'll see you i'll I'll see you again, again did he soon. respond it was like all feeling it wasn't i, I wasn't on earth yeah i wasn't on no, earth using er earthly things i was speaking thoughts but it was i wasn't speaking english so i just knew he was there and i was like i it's okay to to continue on to the next to the next existence and i'll i'll, I'll join you again one day and i love you and i miss you and i came out of that that was those are the first like thoughts that were kind of in english after i hit it it was like fucking to, total like center of the universe shit and uh i came out of it bawling, and crying and it was like incredibly cathartic and then the mdma psilocybin therapy is incredibly it's catharsis that you can't get without that stuff it, it, i used to yell at my therapist it's in my body i can't keep talking about this yeah i know the problems i like, got my dad and my mom yeah yeah this yeah this shit's just in me yeah and ayahuasca dmt and Thanks to ayahuasca and DMT, MDMA now is also ayahuasca and DMT for me. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's an in, I was an atheist. It's an instant God connection. Mm -hmm. and, and and I say that with zero embarrassment because we're in L.A. And you believe in God? Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, like, and they'll throw eggs at you and stuff. It's really hard. Um, it's like rude and people don't talk about it. Um, but... I've gotten so much f beautiful shit from MDMA, it's breathtaking.
I, yeah. I know I because it used to not work for me. Mm. I took it and it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Now, not only does it work, I it's changing me mm -hmm. for the better. Yeah, it's an incredible. It's an incredible. And I'm not doing it with a therapist either. Like I'm yeah. just doing it, I doing it at the club. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it at home by myself. At a strip club. I'm doing at a strip at club. With, at friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> strip clubs, uh, Home Depot. Yeah, at the players' club. <laughs> um, uh, but the that I've never really heard anybody else talk about MDMA helping them in that way. I mean, I've heard about it on uh, that, it's but no one I know. Un, it's uh, uh, unbelievable. And there, you can look up why, like, you know, you, you, trauma stored in the amygdala yeah, yeah, and it allows yeah. access to the amygdala. But like, even when I said that to my, the MDMA therapist and he goes, have you ever seen an amygdala? And I go, no. And he goes, do you know what it looks like? I go, it's almond shaped gland. And he goes, you got, you're always thinking from here up. He goes, I need you in your body. You can't think your way out. You got to feel your way out. And it's, you know, this is piggybacking off what you said about, you know, your therapist keeping you kind of like from the neck up yeah. thinking the whole time. It's like, it, it is all in your organs, all all that pain and trauma. It's all And I don't even say, I, organs. I feel like all like epigenetics and tr stored trauma and all that stuff. I, it is true when it, when it's left, when it's left Epigenetics, me, I don't know what that is. Epigenetics is well, like you flew your parents, over my head with that. Your parent, it's your dad's stress from Haiti, your mom. Oh, transgenerational yeah. trauma, that yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. My experience is, like, going through Aya, DMT, and MDMA, I'm better off afterward, but I didn't feel it. Although I do shake, so maybe that's part of it. I'm like, I do pretty significant shaking. That's pretty wild. But it's not like, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, although the other day on MDMA, I was, I was, like, doing this, and I was forgiving people. Yeah. And it was like, it was outstanding. Yeah. Like outstanding. Like, why are you doing this at a club? Yeah. Don't, d you're throwing it away. Yeah. Like do it or, or some, just do something else at a club. Like yeah. this shit can really help you. Yeah. What were you screaming about on it? Nothing specific. I wasn't like, it, it wasn't, it was, it was beyond words. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. like, and this is stress about the bully from sixth grade. Yeah. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't like that. Yeah. It was, it was ineffable. You know, it was, uh, I think just the stress of the past few years all yeah. culminating. It was, it was like purging, but yeah. without the vomit. Yeah. But it felt the same, like, ah, like, like this, like, yeah. Uh, like going into labor. I, yeah. I guess I can't say what that is. It feels like, but it was like this, like, like from my perineum upwards, this, it was purging without vomiting. <laughs> it, that's what it felt like. It was almost like, it was like shitting and coming and vomiting. It was like, yeah. Ah, and, and like yawning, every yawning, yawning and crying yeah, and, yawning, and yeah. burping. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 and your ears popping. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, dude, I'm, I'm with like MDMA is like, damn, yeah. like fucking damn. Yeah, that's great. Um, you right. start. You did do depression treatments though, right? You did ketamine. No, you did. no, 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 no. That that was no. for no. That was that was for like trauma and for life. Oh, great. Oh, that was different. Okay, so this was that was for like a PTSD strain. Yeah, that's that's for me. That was for me trying to work past the things that I couldn't on a physical level. Yeah. There are things that I'm sure listeners may, you know, relate to, which is, and I've yelled this at therapists, it's in my body. Yeah. I can't talk yeah. this out. No, no. And, and so that, that book that became popular really got into the body keeps the score. It really does go and hang out with people who've been bitten by a dog or have had bad dog experiences. See what happens when a dog barks around them. They jump before they can acknowledge that a dog is even there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing with, I don't care where a black person is, put a police siren on. Mm -hmm. There's a thing, there's just like a, yeah, just a. It's like a deer hearing a lion. Yeah, it's just like lion. a. Like, huh? Eh, what is it? Yeah. Eh, it's, like yeah. A, it's like a twitch moment, you know? And you, 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 you know you're fine. I'm sitting in a restaurant with Neil Brennan. I have done nothing wrong. I have nothing. There's nothing that is going Top wrong. Top of my the life. world. Best. You're at a restaurant with me. What could possibly? You've done something, right? <laughs> and then I hear a police siren going past. There's just a. Yeah. It's my body. It's not my brain. And I think a lot of people have that and they don't realize that they have that. And then it affects how they feel in certain situations, which then affects how you are in certain situations. Yeah. 
you know? So sometimes your body feels things or remembers things from how you were treated as a child when you asked for something mm -hmm. and your parents rejected you. And then what happens now? When you ask in real life, you, you, you want to say something to your partner, hey, can we, can we, and they go, can we what? And immediately your body panics. They haven't even done anything. Yeah. And you're, that feeling, you try and avoid it as much as you can. So maybe you don't ask for it. Actually, uh, no, no big deal. Don't worry. It doesn't about matter, actually. Yeah. It doesn't, let's keep it moving. But now the feeling is there and your action is there. And then you're acting against yourself. And that's, it's, it's just such a weird cycle to, to go on. You did a few ketamine things, right? Yeah. yeah. No. So I, w I went for therapy. I've been in therapy for years. Yeah. Right. I think you and I spoke about that as well. Um, yeah. But I've, I've been in therapy for years. And it was actually one of my therapists who said to me, Hey, have you ever thought of trying something that would go beyond the talk therapy? I was like, what do you mean? And she said, well, there's this, there's this therapy that some really good therapists are doing, ketamine therapy. And I was like, mm, I've heard of ketamine. I don't do drugs, lady. I know where this goes. Look, lady. I was like, I know where this yeah. goes. Yeah. You know, next thing I'm like- Hanging like, out with the wrong crowd. I'm in like a cult in Hollywood. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Buying hot dogs with Gerard Carmichael. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I was like, I know where this goes, um, but then when I when 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 I when I understood it better, when I when I did a lot of reading because I was I, I wasn't comfortable with it, um, I understood that sometimes you need something that breaks the connection between your brain and your body, mm -hmm. so that your brain gets a break from your body in processing the information, um, and so okay. your so your mind lets you go, and that's with a good therapist. I wouldn't tell anybody to do it without. Yeah. A therapist because I don't think you'd get the same results. You need, yeah, I, you need yeah. proper guidance. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully, the cost will come down because it's still pretty costly. Is it? Yeah, getting doing ketamine with a therapist. It's just, it's yeah, it's just it's like a new thing. So it's oh, it's there still like prohibitively high in that way. Yeah. I thought they'd gotten it down in some places like Colorado and New York and everything. Yeah, it's potentially yeah. How big a shift was the ayahuasca? Jimmy, I thought you'd never ask. Yeah. This is, by the way, the longest <laughs> the show has ever gone. It's the longest without... I've ever gone in conversation without bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's made me, it shifted my priorities. Where I do actually say, as much as I'm joking about, like, I don't want to feel like I'm not a big deal. But Well, you want to feel like you're the biggest deal. In one sense, you want to go, I'm at one with the universe. That's, that's, you couldn't be a bigger deal. I'm a tiny cog in the wheel. It's, it's, it, it's, takes it, you to, a it takes you way closer to tiny cog in the wheel. Because you just go like, this is going on in a million places right now. Some, I, I couldn't even, like, I feel like once you experience God, you, which I believe I did on ayahuasca and the various things I've done, it just contextualizes you. But I mean, this is, it's amazing to have a list of your, um, your blocks and not to have depression on it. It is such an extraordinary moment. I think it might be worthy of one of those. Yeah. You were depressed for 25 years, uh, medicated um, pretty heavily. Yeah. And well, just one, I guess two things at one point, but yeah, but, yeah. It, but constantly throughout yeah. that period. I don't feel much pride over it because but, I don't, you, I don't think people that have depression are, I never felt bad about it. My family, brother, older brothers be like, are you going to keep taking that stuff? And I was like, yeah, I don't care. It's like diabetes or whatever. Yeah. It's not. So, but the fact you're out the other side of it, I do think is remarkable. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's very few guy. people that have. Yeah. Be through, obviously, I see it more as I didn't really earn it. I suffered from it. I mean, when but, you look at, sorry, you, yeah. I tell you what you should watch. Blocks. It's a Netflix special where a guy at the end talks about all of the different things he did to get through his, he yeah. didn't sit with his depression. Like it's, it's a weird thing where you're a guy with depression with quite high agency. And I, I want, so you I read bought it. everything yeah. and you went and you got these crazy magnets on your head, in Ch but they weren't strong enough. So you went to China to get stronger, more illegal ones. Uh, we don't care about this guy. If I can turn it up to 11. But that thing of like going, you really looked for everything and you found something that worked for you and a non-addictive drug. You know, you get the call, you hang up the phone or you, you have the message from it. And it feels like you're exactly the same person I've always known. There's an absolute essence yeah. of neil brennan but now you're you're not depressed anymore. I, some, and how, I can hit the gas a little on i couldn't hit the gas when i was depressed you there was yeah. no ability to hit the gas uh energetically yeah and now there's some i still have i can hit the gas 
problem is my face doesn't always do it. <laughs> yeah. My face just sometimes just like, I think I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of beaming. amused by how little, you, you know, how much there's a, there's a, there's a shot Neil has on his phone, his screensaver, which is the, it's him on stage and it's the monitor, which would normally have prompts or something on it if you're recording a special. And it just says smile. Yeah. And it's so and funny to me. I still didn't smile enough. Yeah. I go, and, I but was the make... irony of your job being, I mean, it's like the, it's the classic old joke about the clown. Yeah. Going to see the psychiatrist. And the guy says, when well, you're depressed, you go and see Pavel. Pavel's playing this weekend. He's the greatest clown in the world. He's, you go and have a good laugh. That will cure it. He goes, I am Pavel. <laughs> That's funny. But the yeah. thing, you're on stage making people laugh, making people feel okay about what they're going through. Because really, your sharing is, is, you know, it's hard to watch one of your shows and not project a little. What do you mean? Well, because you watch it and you talk about, you're very emotionally honest. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to watch it and not go, oh, yeah, I've got a thing with, it's not that, but it's this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever that, that thing is. Yeah. I, I, as you're saying this, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I see that as I, I was so self-pitying for so long that now that I'm not, I don't, uh, I don't even understand it. So if you feel like I don't give my childhood enough well, no, power I, I, or not power, but just no, acknowledgement, but, yeah, I don't, I, with the ayahuasca and the depression thing, like I had time and I had a little money. So I could do stuff hmm. that most people can't. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.